Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Rhett. And I'm Link. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we're looking back at the year through the lens of our online purchases because after all, <laughs> that's how we define ourselves anyway, right? That's how I do. <laughs> no, I, I. this was a lot of fun last year when we did it and I think that you, you expand, you've already pre-expanded because we said this would be our Amazon purchases. I because, totally forgot because we Because we get so many things through Amazon. Uh, so I've kind of limited it to, to those purchases. Oh. But I know you've you're going outside of that. I had to, and so I I, I reserve the right to maybe go outside of that a little bit because I did make some significant significant purchases that were not on Amazon. But whatever you need to fully define yourself, that's what this is about. Well, you know, I uh, if you, unless you buy things, how do you know who you are? Well, I, how do you know? My my I've discovered that my sort of calling in life is to go into the driveway and to break down boxes oh, and God. flatten them and put them into recycling. Like yeah. that, that, that's my me time. Cause I try to get my kids to do it and they, they won't, you know, I'm a failed father. Cause I think, yeah, I think last year my list was um, that special box cutter, which I had recommended yeah, and it was yeah. on my list. And uh, we had to pick up something. We had to pick up a mirror that wouldn't, every time it was delivered to the house, it was broken. So. Christy arranged for us to pick it up from the shop. And then we got there and I took my box cutter with me because I'm like, I wanna open it there and I wanna do it with my box cutter. And they were like, yeah, you don't have to open it here because then, uh, well, you it's, you can't, you have to return it in the packaging. And I was like, no, we're opening it here and I'm using my box cutter. <laughs> I could tell they were really eyeing it. They liked the slice. Um, it was broken, by the way. Your box cutter was broken? No, the mirror was broken. Oh. Which is, and so we didn't, we still didn't get it. Um, mirrors break, man. That's one of the one of the hazards. I'm not gonna go better through, on their dime than ours. I, I'm gonna go through a lot of stuff and more stuff than you, undoubtedly. I'm going through everything I bought, but I'm not <laughs> going through my exhaustive list because that's 141 individual items oh that just for me. Now I want you to understand the vast majority of these are very small, and inconsequential, and I'll get into some of those. Uh, it would well, just why be, are you apologize? No, I'm just saying it would be so, well because people are like it's. I know people have lots of opinions about buying stuff on Amazon to begin with. I get it. I understand. Uh, I think in the end we're going to figure this out, and I think that the convenience of the service is going to be something that we find a way to do without qualm. But I will say that that comes out to like almost almost buying something every other day, you know. <laughs> but. I buying multiple things in one shipment, but still there ends up being a lot of boxes. So there's I do, there's a little bit of guilt, there's a little bit of guilt associated with this. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just saying that up front. But I mean, the place I, I wanted to start, just because there's literally one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight items in just this one journey. And this is just for me, this doesn't count the ones that Jesse got. Oh, you're starting, I was gonna start with a journey. Okay. Okay, yeah, well, who's this got, is good. Who's, who's got the better journey? It sounds like you've got a longer journey. Mine's simple, go, and, go and for that it. is the journey to to acquire the correct face mask. Oh, uh huh. And this is something that is especially the reason that this is so personal to me is that it has to do with the beard, right? So early on in the pandemic. When we started wearing masks a lot, I started realizing that I was getting mask beard and it's it can get so pronounced. I don't know if you remember when we were practicing um, the live stream that day and we wore masks during the live the live, live stream like rehearsal. Yeah. And <laughs> I took it off to show everybody what my mask beard looks like and like Crazy. Paisley got a profile shot of me which we can. Oh, are you sure you wanna show that? You know what, I'm not gonna show no, it. No, it's being shown. I, no, no, I'm not showing Already it. Already happening. There's a, there is so many shots of me out there without a beard. I don't have to show the mask beard. I don't hey, have to do it. I reserve they, the right to not show the mask they beard. They already saw it. They haven't seen it. It's over. They I'm making the it. call, we're not showing it. You really built um, it up and they just saw it. <laughs> oh, you know what? You can tweet it on your personal account. They're seeing it again. Um, wow. So because the mask, and, and here's the thing about mask beard, it's not just that the mask beard looks bad, it's that 
Oh, it look yeah, we can tell it looks bad. We're it, looking at it a third time. It locks in like you put a curling iron. And like I you can't get rid of it unless you stop and you wash your beard with shampoo and then let it dry. Like you, you can't you shampoo get, your beard? You can, yeah. I mean, you, in order to get the when it's that locked in, it will not it's like <laughs> it's like you curled your hair and you can't get rid of it. It's like you don't have a beard. You just have a you just have hair for skin against your face. And then there's a line and then there's something hanging down there like a curtain. Yeah, we're looking at it a fifth time. So, the problem is is that they make these masks that are that are supposed to cover your whole beard. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I try, I tried a few of these, man. I I'm going to go through the what all the masks. So I started with the BioTH face mask, which is this is just like that makes it kind of like a duck build. It's more it's an N95. It's K, a disposable. K95, yeah. Yeah, K95, K95 or whatever it is. Pointy. Uh and I was like, "Ah, oh, this is causing trouble." So then I did the Michelle XL summer face and beard. Summer face. Headwear reusable cloth covering for dust outdoors. They, first of all, lots of cloth masks early on in the pandemic before we really understood that those are not very effective. Yeah, but that was a whole year earlier. Uh well, this is well, I'm still no, but the whole the cloth is not really working that well. That knowledge was really dispensed in 2021. It wasn't really dispensed in 2020. When we all kind of came to terms with the fact that, listen. And I, th I think you, it was more of a 2021 thing for you because it, it was more, you were more of getting out. You were, we, were, we were becoming more active and needing masks more. And trying to settle on we like. We bought what, a lot more masks What is my mask than gonna be? Right, and this is before I was like, okay, I, I'm still trying these masks that are probably not even effective. Because now right? you're making a public decision. Yeah. Not just a protective decision. And Th it, 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 there's a look here. Then I did the Toltex face mask, then the Purian face mask, adult XL, extra large for men with beards. Then the Craft and Soul Matana face mask, then the Interplex Youth Adult Three Ply face. Okay, so now I'm getting back into like, this is, I, I, this is a point where I abandoned, I'm like, just trying to cover the whole beard. It's not a tight thing. It's just I'm I'm not wearing a mask just to make it look like I'm wearing a mask, which is what a lot of people do who don't even believe that the masks work, even though they clearly do if they're worn right and it's the right kind of mask. Some people are just like I'm complying mm -hmm. with your idea here, or your rules, but I'm trying to make it as easy as possible. But I was like, I actually I'm I actually interested in doing this in, a, in an effective way. So I abandoned the beard mask because it's just not going to happen. It's kind of like you're gonna when you wear a hat, you're not gonna then if you're out with people just take the hat off and then walk around with hat head. You're committing. You're just gonna have to wear the mask all the time. Right. And then I got this outdoor research essential face mask kit. A kit. It's you know it's just you build your own. These are the words that they use. <laughs> And then again, and then finally, I just landed on disposable face mask. <laughs> and you uh, gave up. Yeah, and that's and so now I operate with two two distinct choices. There is the 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 K ninety five or KN ninety five, whatever it is, which is what we have here at the studio for everybody to wear. That was on my list of something that I and that's what we buy a lot of. And that that and that locks it in, and that does give me mask beard. And then I've got this the surgical mask, like the three ply surgical mask, which is effective at catching droplets, but it sits more on top of the beard and doesn't create like if I'm like if I'm doing if, if Jesse and I are going out and we have to wear the mask into the restaurant, but then uh -huh. when we sit down, we take the mask off to eat. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of like we're wearing a mask just to say that we wore a mask or just because they made us wear a mask and we went in. I believe in masks, but when you're going into a restaurant to eat, you're not really accomplishing anything by wearing the mask as you walk to your table. Okay, I'm taking a risk at that point. But in that case, I don't wanna have mask beard on my date. And yeah. so then that's when I just wear the surgical one that kind of sits right on top and that I can kind of deal with that mask beard. So you, you yeah. But there was an eight you point. Had to get a system. There was an eight point mask journey and that didn't even include the stuff that Jesse was buying. <laughs> it was, you, it went all over the place. Okay, my you wanna know my version of that journey is with garden hoses. <laughs> 
So on a muscle You're trying lighter. to wash the virus off your face with a garden hose? <laughs> yeah. He's like, I don't wear a mask, but I wash my face every day. <laughs> well, I will constantly, I'm constantly blasting my face with a garden hose. The virus can't get in there. <laughs> right. You just go right in here and it comes right out your nose. <laughs> uh, it turns out it's really hard to find a garden hose that's worth a damn. It's true, man. Uh, I was looking back through the list and I was just so shocked. I was like, okay, I got an expandable garden hose. Cause you don't want, I don't want one that you gotta like loop up and you know, all of the all the problems with like, where's it gonna be stored and how and how big is it and how un, it just doesn't cooperate with I went on this coy. journey in 2020, by the way. <laughs> did you talk about it? I don't think, I don't know if I did, man. Why didn't I land, okay, I, I, I had, ex, I went. Cause I bought it for at the, at the hardware store. It was expandable. And then what would happen is it was like, black and it would scrunch up. So at the moment that all the liquid came out of it, it would shrink up like like cold wiener. Mm -hmm. And Just then like it a cold wiener. be very easy to store. But then when that thing gets plump again, when it's shooting out all that water, it's it's spurting out of every place. Yeah. It's 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 cracking leaks all over the place. Just like a penis. And I will tell you <laughs> that like we bought the ones that said, "Oh, 100% guaranteed." And then what are you supposed no, to do? They break they they break. They don't, don't just break. And sometimes We bought 3 and they, they were all like pss, they just pss, split pss, in the middle. And like, "Oh, there's just a whole you section." You can't get an expandable. So then we were so angry that we bought a flex steel like we went to the opposite extreme. It it's like a chrome. It's like a it's, a, it's just a pipe. It's a, it, <laughs> it's just it's a pipe just, on a hinge. It's a, yeah. you, you can't. But it, it, it doesn't bend at it, all. It did bend. It would it would bend up, but it was like this little, is not going to leak. No, I can only I can only water in this exact radius, but it I, will never leak. What what we did, and you know, honestly, Christy's the one who bought it. It's like Christy looked at those leaky wieners. And she said, I'm going medieval on your ass. Like literally, I'm buying the armored version of a garden hose. And this then, is the one from the infomercial. Mm, it's just called Flex Steel. I think there's an infomercial for it. Not Flex Seal, that's an infomercial. And that's for the boats. No, no, I know it's not. When you wanna cut, chop a boat in half and then. Because there's also infomercials for the expandable ones too. That's where I fell in love with the idea. Um, and then we ended up with, uh, it's called a no kink but it's like, it's made of different stuff than expandable. So it's kind of expandable. Yeah, I can't go there. It's called no kink. You gotta go kink. I gotta go kink. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it still kinks. Yeah, you, because you, listen. Garden you, you hose can't help. You can't like, help but kink sometimes. Th there is, I mean, there's gotta be an answer. And I still haven't found it. I gave up with the third one. It's not leaking yet, but it is kinking, even though it's called the no kink. Well, I don't have a record of this, because again, I went to the hardware store for, because uh, I do shop local, okay? I believe in that. Um, I went to the hardware store to get, we, we actually decided on a hose that is not expandable but per se, but like it gets really, really it, it doesn't shrink up but it's super like flexible. That, that's what we have. And they're black. Yes, it's called the no kink. Okay, well I've got, we have. That's uh, what we have. We have three of those or four of Maybe those that around works. the house. And um, I bought the the things to, to to wind it up. Not 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 the like crank it wind it up, but just like this thing that sits on the side of the house and we just roll it Christy around. Christy wants it. to get like a piece of pottery that I can just shove it down. Like a, a snake. Like a decorative, and yes, the, that's like a you, cobra coming out of a, well, you a have, piece of you, pottery. Well, you have to play a, 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 an instrument to get the snake, to get this the hose to come out. That's the <laughs> problem I can with that. I break out my recorder. <laughs> we are dadding so hard. Move, move on to something else. Um, okay. Garden hoses, man. Who who would have thought? Okay, I'm gonna now. I'm going in chronological order. And this again, this is just the stuff that I thought was notable. I bought this first thing because of you. The Neil Med <laughs> special <Okay>. link brand, <laughs> Neil Med uh, Sinu Inhaler, Sinu Sinu Inhaler. What? Sinu Inhaler, okay. natural non medicated aromatherapy inhaler. So this is like you like oh you come into the office and you you got some something you put uh, in your nose and you it's sniff a, it's a menthol stick yeah I got it like two years ago maybe three and the thing still works yeah it's amazing 
Uh, I so, used it a few seconds ago. Yeah, you so I'm not necessarily. It looks like, like chaps that you stow up your nose. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I do, I do find because I've got a slightly deviated septum, and the right nostril will sometimes be like, uh, it's not really fully functioning this morning. It's, that, got, it's got a little kink in it. That Neomed's going to open you up. And uh, and I, I do that, and I've got, I keep it in my bag, and I've used it probably a dozen times over the past year, and it's uh, it was a really good purchase. It's super inexpensive. It's kind of like. Makes you feel like you're awake. But have you seen this new product? It's all over the internet right now. And if you're on TikTok or Instagram, you're getting ads for it if you're me. It's called like um, like something drops, like wake up drops. It's like. Mm -mm, I haven't seen this. It's, it's caffeinated? It, no, no, I think it's smelling salts. I think it's essentially smelling salts. Oh. It's, a, it's a company that has these things that you sniff. Is it a? Is and it then a pouch it's like, that you burst? <laughs> like it's totally like wakes you up. I don't remember the name of it, but everybody, I mean, I'm getting a bunch of ads for it because I guess they know that I want that feeling. I, I it's know. probably toned down from like the the ones that EMTs use. I remember when my mom was would always get her EMT certification, there was the smelling salts day, and it's like a little pouch. They would it's kind of like you can get them on Amazon. I think when the policemen get trained in how to use their their they're tasers. You get tased and they, they get smell it. They line up and get tased. Well, the EMTs lined up and they got s smell salted. And I was curious and I took one of the pouches and you you burst it and you sniff it. And boy, that was that was an awakening. Well, it works, man. I it mean, was almost, it totally works. It was almost painful. And I have to think this is a lesser version of that because you're not knocked out. Well, it doesn't knock you out; it brings you back. And if you but if you, but but you don't use it when you're knocked out. You use it just when you feel like it. If you just there's some people who swear but by you, you, you smelling haven't tried salts. This. You haven't tried this. No, but some people swear by smelling salts like before a workout. It's a trend, and so these guys got in yeah, on that. Yeah, um, I, I'm I'm interested in that. You know, that's akin to the to the Neil Med. Menthol but you don't, the thing is, you don't even use Neomed brand, mm. do you? Because yours well, is not Neomed. It was bought for me and it lasts forever. But it is spelled N-E-I-L. Yeah, so it is a I know what you're family. talking about. Um, we're gonna talk about more products, uh, but first. We gotta sell you some products. Uh, what are we talking about mythical.com? Is that what we're talking about? Last chance? What is it? Gift, gift cards. Okay, Oh, we yes. got gift cards? Yes. That's perfect for the holiday season, Kiko. You know, it's <laughs> like, you don't know what to give somebody? But you know that they're a mythical beast, yeah. so you give them a mythical give gift them a card. Give them a mythical gift card, and then they can buy whatever they want with it. Am I right? That's how that's how gift cards work. Yeah. And we have them. Yeah. We're selling them. Where? Mythical dot com. Of course. I love it. One of my favorite things about this stage in my life is that there are things happening that you under take the, credit under for. the banner of the company that we created that we are told about. That's a good place yeah. to be. Mythical smelling salts. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like we're gonna have to push hard for that one. Yeah, I just, oh man, I think we could get into that. The Sniffleupagus. Something drops, like horse drops. It's not, I can't remember what it is. You got something else? Suck and wake. Um, we'll go back and forth. Come we'll go back and forth until you run out of things. Um, I got some smart plugs. I committed to Wemo, not a sponsor. None of this crap is a sponsor. But you buy one smart plug, and then all of a sudden you got all these other smart plugs. And explain then, this to me: Is it it taps into your router? Yeah, and it's all within one app. Y you have smart lights in your house. Yeah, but I don't have no internet on them. I do that with the Nest. With oh, the, with, with the with the Nest nodes, the Google Nest. That's nodes. interesting. Yeah, these they connect through your through your Wi-Fi, and then. Through your Google Home, I control them, which is the same oh, thing. Oh, it's you not have. expanding your Wi-Fi. No, signal. no, 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 no. It's just a smart. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the lights that you, I, I went to, I had a few of those, and then we did a remodel, and like there's more lights on the outside of our house. And when the electricians came to do that, I said, I want all of my plugs. So I guess I'm catching up with you. But and I, you went Wemo because I already had some Wemo, but, but these but, Wemo but, were like hardwired in. Hmm. So now, yeah, I do the Lutron on that. And you know what I did? I didn't get enough. Like, I still have, before I go to bed, there's one light, I have to walk to the front of my house and turn off the chandelier at the front door. Here's manually. the thing, I believe in having at least one manual light just to stay grounded. I feel like it's done that for me. Yeah, there's one light that you gotta actually touch. 
But they there's were all, one that doesn't even have a switch. I have to unscrew the bulb every night, just to feel grounded. Or just shoot it out with a BB <laughs> yeah, gun. Just put in another one <laughs> in the morning. Put in a new bulb. Screw it in the morning. <laughs> Take a little BB gun out there, shoot it. You I know, mean, somebody lives like that. Justin Timberlake apparently wears a new pair of underwear every single day. Really? I saw that on one of those BuzzFeed articles <laughs> ten years ago. <laughs> I mean, once you start adding the 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 uh, smart light switches to your cart for every light switch, that, that, put, that's that puts a, big a cart. pound in on your that's a big on your cart pay, on your on your on your wallet. Yeah. So I I just got I got purchase fright. So I was really excited, and then I didn't get all the ones that I needed. Well, you can always just get more. Yeah, but, but then, then you I, gotta get somebody to install them. Well, you, they say you can do it yourself, but yeah, and you can. But it doesn't have my picture. It's not a neo. It doesn't say Neomed on it. You know what I'm saying? I know how to put something up yeah, my yeah, nose yeah, and yeah. breathe. This is not something you just oh. smell. <laughs> so therefore, right. this is this I am, requires some electrical knowledge. I, if, if you gotta, if you've gotta go to your power panel and turn off the power before you do something, yeah, that's, that's a red happening. flag for me being Ma involved. I'm making a call on that one. <laughs> you know, it's like I mean, you're just gonna kill everything in the house. Well then I gotta restart everything. Um, I believe you also got one of these. I don't know if you got the same brand. I actually had to go through two and then I landed on this one. The Gista Grill Press Steak Weight Burger Smasher with wood handle. You still in my thunder, man. All the stuff you've gotten, when did, you got that early in the year, you didn't tell me. No, I told you about, I told you about. I forgot. I like I was on a quest for the perfect smash burger because it's, it's what my kids really, really like. You know, I, I, yeah, I, me too. I, I like a smash burger and a thick burger, but I totally, so this my happened family only earlier likes, in the year. Yeah, this is like January. And you told me about it, I totally forgot. Well, at the end of, I think at the end of 2020, I may have even talked about it last year, I got one, but it wasn't completely flat. It was like it had a ring on it and it had enough for the burger to like kind of sneak up in there and you could Yes. You could so I was like, this is no good. I want one that I can just smash it as thin as, as I possibly I want can. It. Right, and when I was, I, I didn't access this conversation because yeah, it was three months ago, I went and got my Burger Smasher set. And I, you because got a set? I got, I got a, gr I, first of all, for my Green Egg Grill, I got the Half Moon Griddle. Yeah. So that I could smash the, bur you can't do that on, on the, um, on the grates. I just, yeah, I do it inside on the, on a, in a pan. And then, yeah, so you gotta get the smasher and you're right, you, it cannot have a lip so that, because then, yeah, you want it to be smashed out and for the edges to be uneven. You don't want it to be a perfect circle yeah, yeah. and you gotta have the right amount of meat and you gotta measure it out, that's dumb. You gotta really watch out for that. That's the hottest tip I think people are gonna get today from, from Rhett and Link is, your burger smasher cannot have a lip. Yeah. And half of them on Amazon, even highly rated ones, do. M uh, yeah. It and you know what else you need to get? Uh, but what did you, because I went with the Gista. And I, I like I it because it had I didn't a even wood put, handle. I didn't even put the name brand down, but it wasn't, It mine's fully metal. There's no wood because wood gets stained and it, but it wood, looks nicer. But, nah, but wood doesn't, wood keeps the heat from coming into your hand. I also do recommend wearing a glove because it'll burn the back of your. Oh yeah, you got to burn it. all the hairs off your knuckles. But we, I mean, I've had some, in fact, that makes me want to do that this week. I've had some really good burger times. You got to get the smash right, but then this is why I got the kit because you also have to have a shaker ready with everything you need. So like you smash and then you shake on your, your, salt and pepper or whatever your mixture is. It definitely needs, you want it to be salty. And then when you flip it, you flip it and you salt, you shake it again. So you gotta, and you, you gotta have a, a smasher hand well, yeah, and a but... shaker hand. And the grill is so hot that I gotta do it fast. Mm. So so okay. I've got like a shaker that's bi it's big. It's not like, you, you can't shake on something and shake on something else. You gotta have one shaker that has everything like, uh, the deli style, and it's pretty big, so it's it's um you know like a three inch. You gotta get your diameter. ratios right if you do that. But then you're shaking kind of. I mean, I'm just doing salt. I'm just doing most mostly salt and a little bit of pepper. Yeah, and I might put a little garlic powder a little bit. in 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 the meat mm. before I mix it. But but you with with my grill and with the timing and everything, and they grill so fast, I'm, I can't regulate it like a stovetop. So it's like if it gets really hot, you just gotta be fast. 
So I don't have time to be shaking two things. Well, that's the other thing too. I mean, it's cool to be outside and do it, but I've actually, I've, I, and I've got like that nice smoker slash grill that I use for a lot of things, but I have transitioned to bur burgers and steaks hmm. inside, man. I'm doing burgers and steaks inside. I'm doing steak in a pan. Hmm. You know, because I mean, if you go to a, a fine, yeah, I just want to, you know, I just want to be able to use the grill. They're you know? like, they're they're doing it on a they're, well, they're like doing like a broiler, but it's a challenge to it. I'm not great at it because there is timing. The third thing in the kit is a, an extra wide spatula because when you when you smash that burger down, yeah, and it gets, I like to make them really wide, and then you got to have a a real strong. Batch that you can just throw underneath that yeah. thing and, and, you, and flip it and real fast. And then you, you cheese them on the grill, right? Cheese them on the grill. Yeah. And then the other thing they'll try to sell you in a kit that I opted out of is a cover. Which you then you can kind of, to help steam, like you put the, the uh, you flip it, salt it, put the cheese on it, and then put a cover on it to like really help it melt, but I, I opted out of it. Unnecessary. That. I thought it was unnecessary. Okay, I love a good smash burger. Oh, so we're going back to you already? Because that was me. So no, I said I your started smash that. was only a smasher. You yeah. didn't even have the other stuff. I, and I, I said, yeah, I got the same thing. No, I, ha I mean, I, yeah, I already had like a, this spatula and stuff. It's just I'll, I'll go again. Um, I got a whole category of stuff. Okay, uh, related to the cat. Mm, mm. It's just, it's like I, you know, you get another type of animal in the house. Like getting a second dog was one thing, but like. Getting Sokka in the house and then coming to grips with all the stuff that we needed to do, it's like, okay, now there's that chair that he always sits in. There's hair all over that thing. And then Christy's like just scratching it with her fingernails, like there has to be a way. So we got the Chom Chom, mm. which is like a, it's basically like a lint roller that um, then it creates a cat hair log that you open the back of it and this big log of cat hair comes and out. And you feed that to your dogs? And then you feed that to the dogs. No, you just feed the cat shit to the dogs apparently. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, which brings me to the uh, the other thing which was multiple litter boxes. Yeah. You know, it's like we had just the open cover litter box. If you're a member of the Mythical Society and you and you come to our monthly AMAs, you, you've you heard me regale this story of, but I'll tell it, go large here on Ear Biscuits. Jade is not into this, but Jasper loves to eat that cat dookie. Gosh, it's so gross. I don't, I'm, I'm embarrassed that I've got something in my house that can't help but eat cat shit. Mm. Like it, I don't know what it says about me, but I feel like it says something about me that I didn't wanna be. But if you had to, choose one being in your house to eat the shit of another being in your house, you would probably pick the animals. Yes. And you'd probably go cat eats, dog eats cat shit. That makes me feel better about it. So we're like trying to get a type of litter box that Sokka will still use, but that Jasper can't get into. And we went through, we got a big bucket type that like he, go, he crawls down inside of it. And then that was working until we noticed that every time uh, I would go in upstairs into my walk-in closet in my bedroom that I would smell, so I, I smelled something that I, I described as like a meaty smell. Oh, I was like, is there something that like, have I worked out and lost oh. a piece of clothing that has gotten something growing on it that's like, it's a very deep, dark, smell. Meaty? That's almost meaty, but like gross meaty. And then uh, Christy discovered that the duffel bag underneath all of my hanging clothes in my section of the closet has been the depository of Sokka's pee, not dookie. Sokka has been crawling into that thing and just peeing in my duffel bag mm. again and again and again. And we basically trace that to stress related to Lily leaving for college and him him not being happy about that. Um, I, so, pee, I peed in a duffel bag when I was sad. So um, 
Then we had to clean all of that out and we had to buy this angry orange detergent to d- deterrent is the I'm word. About to say you didn't you didn't keep that duffel bag. <laughs> no, we got rid of the we duffel bag. We used some orange detergent on the duffel bag. I now keep on my gym clothes no, in it. We had to buy angry orange detergent to spray on everything that the cat wasn't supposed to be orange eating or oil. peeing in. Yeah, and then so we sprayed in the area that the duffel bag used to be and then was very diligent about closing our door. But then. Is that why you smell like oranges and not shit now? <laughs> or, 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 or not piss? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like meaty cat pee. Yeah. But what we thought was that he wasn't using his litter box but was instead using my duffel bag was because he was too, he got too big for the litter box. So then, so now I have this whole purchase history of like buying a bigger litter box that he can jump inside, but then he still didn't wanna use that. And then when we switched to a bigger litter box that he can crawl in the side of, that's when Jasper started eating his dookie. And so it's like one problem leads to another problem. He's So now I'm on the verge of buying uh, Kitty a, a litter box that is robotic. That Every time Jasper comes up it just scolds him. Every time the cat poops, it's it scrapes it up and puts it in a place. But then it's like, I don't know the maintenance of that. I don't know. There's lots of questions. Yeah, there. but you're you're already talking about how if a Lily, lot of Lily decides to take the cat with her next year, that you're going to be sad. Like, are you going to fight for this cat? Th- this conversation is giving me renewed perspective because I'm also looking like we bought a calming diffuser that emits the pheromones that a mama cat puts out to make a make the baby cats not fight with each other that also makes cats chill out. So it's like we're trying to deal with the cat's stress so that we'll, and then it also uh, attracts the cat to the area where we want the cat to pee and not in the duffel bag that's no longer there. So there's that, multiple litter boxes, orange stuff, calming diffuser, chom chom hair thing and a litter genie, which is like a fancy thing that you, as soon as the cat craps, you gotta, we scoop up the crap and we put it in a thing that then it puts it, it's like a diaper genie yeah. but for cat shit. Mm. So we got, I like that, I recommend that. You didn't use the robotic one. Haven't gotten, haven't gone there yet. Mm. Okay. They're well. really pricey and I'm also very, I, I'm very skeptical if Sokka's going to go for it or if then he's just gonna start shitting in the plants again, which was the first problem we had. Well, I don't have any cat related purchases. Um, I did, however, buy 40 large pinky mice. What? Oh, you're talking about food for a snake. Yeah. You still have that snake? Yeah, I mean, he's still still a part of the family, Moose the snake. Um, You bought 40, 40 at a time, you said? He eats forty at a time. No, you know, he, <laughs> he he eats one like one a week, if Shepard keeps up with it. Um, yeah, so I so I have like a a handful of mice in the freezer, which mm. Jesse isn't happy about. But it's in, they're in a bag. It's in another bag. You know, there's other animal parts in our fridge that we eat. It's not that big of a mm. deal. I mean, you gotta. Why don't you put it in the fridge in the garage? It is in the fridge in the garage. Okay, that's better. Um. Let me, I'll rattle off a, a couple here. Uh, Sex Criminals Volume One, One Weird Trick. Uh, what? This is a graphic novel. How graphic? Um, Sex Criminals. This is a series about uh, a woman who discovers that when she has an orgasm that time essentially stops in the afterglow. And then she meets a man who, after he orgasms, the same thing happens and they can interact with each other and do things in the afterglow. Uh, this is a famous graphic novel or comic what series. What were you Googling that, that you discovered this? Um, I was Googling. Uh, can I stop time with my orgasms? Yeah, I was like, yeah, hi. <laughs> Why do does it feel like time has stopped after no? Uh, I was Googling highly rated graphic novels for a reason, for no reason at all. Um, and uh, so, and I 
ended up buying this one and a I few other ones. I think it misinterpreted ones. the adjective graphic. I, it's actually not that graphic. It's very funny and it's very it's very well done. I didn't actually, I haven't moved beyond volume one. Not because I don't want to, but because I feel like I learned what I needed to learn for the when, purposes that I was trying you, to learn them. What occasions sitting down to enjoy uh, what's it called? Sex, crime. Sex, criminals, volume, volume one, one. One weird trick. Like, is this like a before bed reading? Is this on your, is this like downstairs by the fireplace? I don't do any reading next to the fireplace. That only happens in movies, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, you got a really great place to do some. Uh, some I, I bought it for research purposes <laughs> and um, and I just read it. I read. I read it in a couple of nights. Like a couple. A couple of nights. So I was like, okay, I dude. Get, I'm just. Gonna, I, I, I don't know what you're trying to research, but you're not going to stop time by ejaculating. <laughs> no, I, believe me, I've tried. <laughs> uh, I, I I do recommend that. I don't know if that's going to be my rec. I'm going to pick one of these things to be my official rec. But um, that was sort of a weird one that stood out when I was like, oh, what did I? Oh, I know why I bought that. And I bought a couple other ones that are like really well respected, sort of like timeless graphic novels that I actually can't remember where they are at this point. Nothing's been as good as Watchmen to me. I'm 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 a normie when it comes to graphic novels. So, huh? Can I borrow it? Yeah, sure. Just put it under your mattress, <laughs> <laughs> like when Trent gave me that penthouse. What am I going for next? I'll, I'm going to go with my biggest purchase of the year. Oh well, I think yeah, my next purchase ties in with that. So you go ahead and uh, I'll. Uh, no, no, I don't think it does. My mountain bike. Oh, I, I got oh, a new oh, mountain yeah, bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is. I mean, this is probably. This might be my biggest purchase since I got a car. It sure has to be. Because, um, you know, one of the main things that I, I got back into, year before last. What was my mountain biking? You know, I, I'd fallen out of it. Nick and I would go mountain biking a lot, and then it was just like uh, things got busy, and it's kind of like surfing for us. It's just like, uh, you know, it requires like some logistics umph to get going yeah. with it. And I got back into it, and he got a new bike. Like he upgraded uh, to a full suspension bike instead of just the front suspension. And it like ha his had a fan has a fancy spring in it, and then he's talking about. How much better it is when you know he's got the uh, adjustable seat post mm. where it's like you just hit the button and it it adjusts up and down. Yeah, um, and he's like talking about how much more of an advantage he has when going downhill with the center of gravity being able to be lower. And here I am every time we we're about to do a big climb, I'm getting off my bike and I'm putting my seat up high. To get you know, because you want to you want to climb with your seat high, and then you want to then when we're about to go down a hill, the writing was on the wall. It's like he's about he, there. He goes, and I'm getting off my bike and putting my seat post all the way down so that my center of gravity is lower, and I'm not going over my handlebars. Right. And I'm like, you know what? For my birthday, I'm gonna I'm gonna upgrade. And you know, paying thousands and thousands, like you know, over five thousand dollars for a bicycle. It's, it seems like madness. But if you want one that is gonna, I mean, this is like your life is in. This is some. There's a lot of engineering that goes into this. It's pretty amazing. You can't really get away. You can't, especially if you're going with someone who has that type of equipment, right? Who's made that investment? The, all the things that he was telling me, he was like, he was selling me on it, and it it took a long time. And then with all the supply chain things that were happening and continue to happen. I had my eye on a bike that was you not even available for pre-order, and but it was the one that I wanted. And it was just like, okay, in three weeks, you sign up for the mailing list, we'll tell you in three weeks when this thing's gonna become available. And then at three weeks, it's like, mm, three more weeks. And then this happens for like three, four months. Yeah. And then one day, we're riding, and I'm just kinda, and I'm telling him this, and he's like, dude, there's a bike shop right over here, and they got some in stock. And I'm like, it's funny how I just like, I just like, I just cringe inside. And I'm like, oh no, you mean we're gonna go somewhere right now and I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop six grand on a bike just right there? Mm -hmm. Like this is, this goes against every fiber of my being. But I had m made a decision that I was gonna get a bike, I'd picked it out. And I, so I had, I'd spent the money in my mind 
So it kind of helped me and I went there and I was like, you know what, I'm never gonna get that other one. So I, I ended up getting a specialized bike. And that's, you get to that's like the name ride brand. it. Yeah, I get to actually ride it. I'd probably still be waiting for the other one uh, from Canyon. So I got the specialized, it's got the, the tube at the bottom is a little bit bigger and it has a secret compartment in it where instead of like having to buy this uh, an accessory that go under your bike seat to hold like your other bike tubes and all that crap that you need if something goes wrong, uh, all of that stuff can be hidden inside of the bike itself. Yeah. So I, that was cool and that got me a little bit excited. It better be cool. I'm telling you. But um, so I got that thing and I've really been enjoying it. So it's like it, it's made a huge difference having the full suspension. Like I've never dropped that money and then not, ha then my immediate experience was not just regret. <laughs> like with all of the psychology of me spending money, like that was one that like I've been so happy with it. In the past six days, I've gone out every other day on like a pretty long ride. Just by yourself. Uh yeah, I, I'll try to go out. I've got a shorter route that I can do, and like from door to I can I can be from my house and back in like an hour and ten. So I can do like a forty five minute ride, and then I've got a, a a good local ride that's like two hours that I can do. So it's like an hour and a half climb, and then a then it's a really long. Uh, you know, 40 minute descent back down. And, but then what happens is there's a lot, It that necessitates a lot of other purchases because you start going a little faster and you've got more performance and you've got, uh, you start pushing yourself. And I, so I start falling off my bike more. So you get ointments and <laughs> yeah, I got, bandages. Well, protective gear. So like, and I got knee pads. I've got elbow pads, and um, I've and I've still got all these bruises on my thighs. And I fell off. You need thigh pads. I fell off a few days ago, and I hit my hip. And so now the last thing I bought was padded underwear. So I'm trying that. You need one of those airbags that this. If you fall off, the whole thing just inflates. You become the Michelin Man. Just roll down the mountain. I mean, <laughs> these mountains that I'm on, it's like I mean, th there's it. It's treacherous. A uh, one wrong move, and I. And I'm not telling Christy this, but yeah, I could just careen off the mountain and die. Yeah, I th and that you know my. But I'm pretty good. I I enjoyed and mountain pretty... biking a little bit, like right when 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 Nick was getting into it back in the day. Yeah, and then like the three of us went out just a couple of times. I, there was like one time I was coming down a hill, and I was like, the whole time I feel like I'm going to. Go over the top of the handlebars, and yeah. I, and I look around at everyone else doing this, and I'm like, no one is as big as me. And I was like, it's tough. I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm. This is something I'm gonna have to just say no to, because, I, yeah, I. The places I, we I'm were going, too, I'm, then too, I'm too worried about my, are, are my body at times more intense than the stuff we do now. Cause we had no business being in some of those places we were, especially on the bikes we were on. And my bike's like 15 years old, 20 oh, years God. old. So. I mean, so I got the protective gear and then I'm like pushing myself and coming back and I'm having these headaches that I can't get rid of and I'm realizing I'm burning so much, so many calories that I'm not eating enough and like, so it like leads to like figuring all this stuff out to like optimization type stuff but then also realizing, oh I gotta be, I can't just be drinking water, I gotta be drinking some electrolytes. So I, I start buying uh, the Tim Ferriss sponsored LM, element salty stuff, you can get all types. It's not a sponsor of ours, but like, so now I put a, a packet of that into my, I've gotten to a point now where if I do a really, like a two hour ride or I, I push it, I'm, I'm either barely or not getting a headache between like calories afterward and like drinking enough electrolytes, I think. But it's- <laughs> You're not fueling yourself enough. I'm kind of, for the first time, it's kind of got me to a point where I'm feeling almost athletic. Almost athletic. I've, you know, I've never considered myself an athlete, but like I think this is some, there's old there's older guys out on these trails, and I think this could be me. I think this could be a long term version of golf for me, as as long as I don't kill myself doing it. You're not gonna die golfing, that's for sure. But I kind of feel like 
I could be in the best shape of my life if I keep this up. Because I, it's a, because I actually enjoy it. Like I've never done anything that's pushed my body so hard that I've actually liked. Because I mean, there's a physical challenge of it, but then there's, I mean, there's the, there's the mental acuity of just the, just the constant uh, reacting to the trail. You know, you're, and I, so I think it's good for my brain and my body. And I, yeah. and I feel like I'm doing something that requires a lot of padding and that kind of makes me feel a little bit cool. You could probably like slip into like a intramural football game. I think I was dressed weird, but <laughs> what right. position does he play? So, so a lot of crap related to that bike. Well, okay, you, this is related to a purchase that you made, which uh, uh, this was unusual because a lot of times I'll decide to buy something That's right. that then you'll get into, and th- and then this would work the other way. So the purchase that I have related to this again, because I'm limiting mine to Amazon, I'll okay. take is. Uh, Wrist guards with palm protection. Um, and this is when we. This is a sore subject, this, but go we, ahead. We got uh, the one wheels, you know. I th- we've talked about the, the one the one wheels, you know, it's that thing that looks like a skateboard, but it's got one big wheel in the middle. It's the electric. So it's, I mean, it's it's pretty pretty damn cool because it's it, it kind of works like, it's the, I have to think it's the technology of uh, what are those, the, the, the trendy things that, the air airboards. It works like a Segway, for lack of a better. I mean, it's it got, it's it's essentially the wheel itself is a thing that is both propelling you and holding you up and, and balancing has, you. And it has regenerative charging. Yeah, and I mean, and on the website when you look at this thing, you're like, you can go on tra- you can go on dirt trails. It's not just for for pavement. And and some of the most fun that we've. I mean. So we got you got three of them, right? No, I no, got, you got two of them. I got two because I kept seeing these Instagram ads for them. Yeah, and I was like, I'm trying to get the boys out of the house, and like I couldn't, I, I haven't had luck getting them to ride bikes that much with me, because I end up pushing things a little too far, and then they're just dejected and spent. So that didn't take, and I was like, this will be fun. Yeah, and it, it's, it's, it's not you're dang- not you're not really working too too hard on yeah. this. There's it's some not, balancing happening, but it's not dangerous once you learn how to do it. I mean, we're not going to be going off on these trails, but I kind of secretly hope we'll be going off on these trails, right? And so then I'm like, I get it, and then I invite you and Shepard over to test it out, and like Shepard immediately took to it. So then you're like, well, I'm going to get a couple of these too. So like, yeah, I had the pint for Lando, which is a smaller one. And then the GT for me, the bigger one. Well, the you, XR. The XR. Yeah. And then you you bought two XRs. Right. For uh, I mean, they're not they're not cheap. It was they're, like seventeen hundred dollars for uh, for an XR, and maybe twelve hundred for a maybe more for than a that. pint. They're they're one of the more more the pricier like EVs. It, it, but I I gotta say, you know, it's same thing with Shepard. It's not easy to get Shepard uh, outside of the house. Away from video games, but anytime I'm like, "Hey, let's go one wheel," and he's like, "All right," he drops what he's doing, and we go. And we have gotten, like, we have found so many cool places to go where the majority of what we're doing is off road. And I've had some close calls. I posted that one on my Instagram where I fell and messed my knee up, and actually wasn't that bad. It was the worst fall that I've had because I actually fell. Well, it was but, interesting. I think even before that happened, like. Uh, I was riding, you came over and then you got him and you started riding and then you start telling me about how, b- the type of injuries you can get on this stuff and like how the dangers associated with it. And I didn't, I had not looked into any of that. I was like, well, you know, we're just gonna be safe. Well, the nose diving is, the nose diving is the thing that, like if you start looking on YouTube, everyone's got a story about, well, I broke my collarbone. I think like Casey Neistat broke, broke his collarbone or broke something. Doing, Cause what happens is you, if you're comfortable, you get going real fast and then it gets to a certain speed. You can go 17 to 20 miles an hour. And then it thing. starts, pu- it pushes back a little bit to tell you, hey, we can't keep holding you up at this speed. But if you d- ignore that, it'll nosedive and then you immediately just careen off of the thing. So I kind of stay away from that top speed. 
Yeah, you have to learn it. You have to learn the limits of it, and um, you have to you have to wear protective gear if you're going to be. That was the one thing stuff. is that especially the wrist guards because the one time I did fall on the pavement, I did nosedive, but it's only because I just I'm I, I'm so big and I'm like kind of at the upper weight limit, and I was going up a hill as fast as I possibly could, but it didn't feel fast to me. It was just, and I also couldn't feel the pushback. And nose dived or nose dove, whatever the proper uh, term is. And I fell and caught myself with my wrist guards and it like skinned them up real bad. I was like, man, that would have been real bad if I hadn't had these wrist guards. But then which, what which, happened, well, you, which, which brings me to- You never bought any wrist guards. But I, I had to borrow your, uh, your XR for Lincoln so that Lando could ride the pint and he and I would each have one. And so I also took your wrist guards that day and then, uh, of course, they were always wearing helmets, and I had elbow pads and knee pads from mountain biking that I put on the put on the boys. Lincoln had fallen and hurt his hurt his elbow without pads, so I was like, "You got to wear the pads from now on." And then I saw the wrist guards, and Lando was over there somewhere. I told this story on Good Mythical More, and so I was like, "Well, I got this pair of wrist guards. Lincoln put these on." Well. Turns out I put the only pair of wrist guards that I borrowed from you on the wrong kid. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Lando, we were going off road and Lando was getting pretty good at it. And then he just got tossed, saw it all happen. And um, he he said he hurt his wrist. <laughs> and I said, you know, just like, just wait walk a little bit and we'll, we'll walk back. Wave it off. And then um, we took the dogs for a walk later he didn't seem like he was complaining too much. We, I, I took him out to dinner later. He said he was having trouble using his hand to get the food on his fork. Yeah, probably and he was having to use the other hand. And then his mom came home from whatever she was at late after Lando was in bed. His and, mom, your wife? Yeah. <laughs> and then the next morning, uh, we wake up to Lando by the bed telling his mom, how much his wrist hurts, and sh and I didn't tell her anything had happened. So that's how she found out that, uh, and she was like, well, you need to take him to urgent care and give him, get him an x-ray, which I did. And when the nurse came back in, I was, I was pretty, you know, I get nauseous and uncomfortable about potential breaks and talk of circulation and things of that nature. Talk of circulation. So when the nurse it's pretty, comes, it's pretty broad. comes in and says, uh, yeah, w we took a look at the x-ray and um, his wrist is, just above his wrist, it is broken clean in two. Mm. I started laughing. Yeah, like every good father would. But it was because I was so uncomfortable, that's, <laughs> I just like, I can't, I just that's just the noise that comes out of me. And uh, I didn't remember this, but what Lando told me afterward, when he also told Christy, uh, his mom, said, yeah, <laughs> said that um, you know that the nurse said, "Sir, um, this is a serious issue. Yeah, this is not a laughing matter." <laughs> and like, I was I was I laughing so much. I don't much. like talk of circulation. I was <laughs> laughing so much and uncomfortable that I didn't even hear her say that. I just mm. kept kind of giggling. So yeah, he had a broken wrist, and at this point, he's not—he's still not released by the doctor to get back on the one wheel. But when he does, he's got wrist guards. So he didn't go the other day. It's just you and Lincoln that went the other yeah. day. Yeah, uh, me and Shepard went the other day. It had like the best time that we. I had. love it. L Lincoln and I had the best time going to the same place. Well, and then the go, funny go, thing going on like sandy trails off road, and like especially when you've got like the proper protection, wrist guards. Elbow guards, well, knee pads, helmet. For me, the, you have confidence. The great thing about the uh, the off roading is you don't get as fast as you do on the pavement. So I actually feel like I fall a whole lot more. I, I fall, I fall off, and then I just kind of run it out. Whereas when I'm yeah. on pavement, I get so fast. I'm like, if I fall right now, it's gonna be on pavement, and it's gonna be bad. <laughs> uh, and then the funny thing is, is you've actually, I think you've changed a, quite a bit because. You know, I saw the advertisements for the new for the new ones, the GT and the the pint, the new pint, and it was like this new one, the GT has more torque, 
more power. I'm like, that's what I need. Oh, it has a treaded tire that you can get. That's what I need yeah. because I get on those trails and I'm just, I get to these hills that don't seem that steep and Shepard, you know, weighs half as much as me. He just goes right up. I get on him and it just bottoms out. Like it can't, it can't support me, I'm too big. And so, and then I tell you about it. You're like, oh, you already bought one. I got one coming. I'm like, what? This man has gotten so loose with his cash. Listen, I yeah, I blame myself for the for the accidents that my kids have had, and I because I I'm like I'm getting another one. This is fun. <laughs> well, and then and then and I was like, okay, well, I got to get one now. So I got one of those on the way. We're actually got getting, them on order. We're, we're, we're gonna have six of those things. We got to like find a friend to just come along with. It, us. Well, the app, the app will tell you if other people in your neighborhood have it. You can meet up yeah. with strangers yeah. in one yeah. way. I don't know if I want to do that. Okay, let me rattle off a few quick ones here. Um, I got the uh, Rapsodo mobile launch monitor, which is a way to keep up with how uh, far your golf ball will go, and all you have to do is hit it into a net, and it's reading the speed of the golf ball and figuring out like, oh, you hit a six iron this far. Oh, it doesn't say, oh, you just hit it three foot into a net. Yeah, it tells you how far it would have gone. Uh, I gotta say, I've had to back off of the, I, I haven't, I purposely haven't swung a golf club in about two months okay. because I was convinced that it was causing my shoulder problem. And unfortunately, I think I was right. So I don't know, I'm having to reevaluate my long-term future. Oh, you should get into mountain biking. You know, what am I gonna do? It's like, if, I, if I'm hurting myself golfing, what am I gonna do next? Mountain biking. Um, this is, a, I, this is a, you know what, this is gonna be my recommendation. All the right. baseball cap, Carrier case. Okay, you're like, what do you need one of those? Okay, so I was going. Is this what it sounds like it is? It's a way. A plastic case? It's a way to put baseball hats in your luggage and not have to worry about like packing them oh, perfectly so that they yeah. get messed up. When I was going back to North Carolina over the summer, I was gonna be playing golf a few times with my dad and my brother and I, and I wear a hat when, I, when I'm out in the sun like that. And you don't want it to be crinkled. But I don't wanna like, I don't like having to then wear the hat on the plane and, it, 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 and also there was like a couple of hats that I had and I find this thing on Amazon, the, the baseball cap carrier case. And I'm like, this thing's perfect. It holds like three or four baseball hats and you just put it in your luggage and you can't, you, I mean, you can Is step on this thing. Is it hollow under the back so you can still nest it on something or does it take up a lot of room? Uh, you know what I'm it saying? It takes up the room of a, of, a, of a stack of hats. It doesn't, it, it doesn't come in and t and. But where it. your head goes into the hat is that hollowed out of no, the no, case. No, it's flat. It's the whole bottom is flat. Like, burr, which, I'm out. Which makes it easier. It makes it easier to pack. In some yeah, regard. but it takes up more space. Well, I mean, maybe you can make one of those. Maybe I'm one of those exists. I want to make one of those in the in the world's best garden hose. Okay, I've got two items that I bought because I have a 17 year old son. I have one more, by the way. Oh, you have one more? Yeah. Okay. Well, I've got like. I mean, I, I want to. I, I, I've got, I got a few, <laughs> and I want to. I'm gonna. I was just gonna rattle through. So if you want to save yours for the to be the last thing, okay. Um, you have this too, by the way. Okay, well then there you go. I'm not save it for the end. We'll be uh, happy. Happy ending. We'll be united in in our purchase. I share. Okay, I share the blender with everyone, but the people who use the blender in my house, it's me and Locke to make these protein shakes that we make, mm -hmm. and he doesn't clean up after himself. Mm. And so he'll leave like some dirty, once you leave that that blender bottle out a few times without cleaning it, yep. it gets cloudy and yep. nasty and you'll never get rid of it. Mm. Right. And so what I decided to do is I was like, I'm gonna buy a replacement carafe essentially, but I'm going to use that one and you're gonna keep using the crappy one and you can do whatever you want to it. Oh. So now I have this Blendtec Carafe, you've which you've hidden. That I just I keep it on the top shelf inside a cabinet, and I, I literally I use it. I make my smoothies. And I wash it. it out immediately. Yeah, yeah, immediately. Put it back up there. It's so, I can you you could use it as glasses. It's so clear compared to the other one that looks like it's painted. This is a seventeen. And, and you know I'm what, picturing I'm, you reading through a picture. What are you doing? Are you looking blender. at that blend tech carafe? No, I'm reading. Uh, and I also got a three pack of extra large shaker bottles. Congratulations. You know what I'm saying? Because again, same thing, he uses my shaker bottle, and I've got one, it's like, the green one's mine. I'll be like, where's my damn, and, and, What is a shaker bottle? I don't know what you mean. It's like Shaking a, what? It's like, if it's what you, if you wanted to put a protein shake without using the blender, oh, okay. but we, it's, it's what we put, 
mean, we'll shake like pre-workout or something in there, but we also okay. just put the shakes in there. And you know how, I mean, this is typical dad, but like you go downstairs and you make your smoothie and then you look for your, and then, and then I, immediately I just flip out, right? Because I'm just like, I know he just took my damn bottle. And you know, it's like, it's yeah. just one of those things. You gotta have your own. And so I go up there and it's in his room and it's got crap in it and it smells like, Something died inside it's of it. Meaty, very meaty. Ugh. And so I bought a three pack, and I was like, "You can't touch any of these." And <laughs> I have three, just in case you end up touching one. I got two more behind it. <laughs> um, I bought this, and I did this several times. Lightning cable, three foot, three pack. Oh, good luck with that. And USB wall charger with three yeah. inputs on it. Yep, yep. I don't know how many of these. Someone. Eat Someone them. is taking them and making like spaghetti out of them somewhere <laughs> in our home. Cause I was like, can't we just have, like I want one kind of like, oh, here's a charger. You're moving towards just having your own house. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's, I've thought of this. Uh, and then you've got it like, there's one that's like behind the couch and it has an extra long cable. So yeah. they're like, hey, I'm watching TV and my phone's about to die, plug it in, set it down. Here's one downstairs in the gym where we're working out. Here's one in the kitchen just in case. I had it all figured out they end up taking them and they just, and I have to just keep buying them. I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. I haven't solved that other than just buying stuff. Mm. This is one uh, I, I'll spend a second on. Uh, I bought some Tevas. I noticed that. I talked to Christy about it. Yeah, well. Because she has them. I was like, is this a thing? I, well, what? now first of all, somebody said that you're supposed to say Tevas. I don't care. I'm gonna say Tevas because that's what I've always said. So, it's the wearing it. This well, hold on, hold on. this is very funny that you're bringing this up because we haven't talked about this. So, I I can't remember where I was. I think it was when we were in Key West, and I like, like had my flip flops. And I'm thinking about the fact that we're probably we're going to uh, we're going to spend some time in Mexico over the the holidays, and oh. uh, having like a shoe that you can wear when you're like we're going and doing some like outdoor activities. And I don't want to wear those like water shoes that are like closed toed that we had. You remember like the ones that we had and every, everybody got when we went to Fiji? You're we talking thought, about, I think you're talking about Keens, which are like the REI version of a water shoe. They're in like, like cl clothes. Well, I'm not, I know what you're talking about. I'm talking about the ones that are more like sock-like. Oh, well that, of course not. That's like. And so I was like, and, and so I have a bias against. Dumb child at a wave pool type I have a, I have a bias against sandals that are not flip-flops, okay? I don't like, Jesse's like, you need to get some Birkenstocks. I was like, I don't like the way Birkenstocks look. And she was like, well, you get some Tevas. I was like, I hate the way Tevas look. Like, I, I've i never seen somebody in Tevas. Birkenstocks are like hippie, but Tevas are like granola. Right, but here's the thing. I have a bias against them. And I told Jesse, I was like, if I, wear, if I get these and I wear these around Link, it'll be the first thing he talks about when he sees me. It's funny, because there's a there's a clip going around about uh, that. There's an interview with Larry David from like years ago. Oh yeah, the one where Seinfeld says when he walks in and the he's room, gonna he's gonna about talk your about your shirt. And me and, and you have that kind of thing where we, yeah. we've judged everything that you could possibly wear and we've come to a bunch of conclusions about them. Yeah. And so I think that Tevas look dorky, right? I can't, I cannot, I think they look dorky on me. I cannot get, whether you got socks on or not, but I put them on and Jesse's like, you don't understand. They're not dorky anymore, and if they are, that's what makes them cool, right? And so she's basically telling me this. I put these Tevas on one night. We go to Pasadena. You went out to go eat, and I'm wa and I'm walking around in these things. And I've also got on like some like these cotton pants that are like a drawstring kind of thing. I feel stupid the whole time, but I'm feeling great. Like I th I feel like I look stupid, but I'm like. I keep leaning over to her, I'm like, I think I might be a Tiva guy. Like, these are incredible. Like, the fact that they don't flop, they feel so secure, but my feet are breathing. I'm like, I kind of think that regardless of how these things look, maybe I'm just a Tiva guy now. Damn. Christy wore these at Disneyland both days, and here I am taking off my shoes and socks in a public place. Oh, it's revolutionary. And I was like, are the straps getting you? Is the, no, no, like, no, no, my no. feet are great. There's nothing, it feels so good the whole time. I go into a coffee shop. Jesse's like, let's get a couple of decafs. I'm like, I'll go in. I go in, I go up to the counter, just some random coffee shop on Colorado and in, in Pasadena. And the and the barista says, Hey, you look like you're from Colorado. 
<laughs> you literally said that. Yeah. And because was, he did. I mean, the hair, the beard, yeah, yeah, the and, plaid. Uh, and the Tevas. And so I was like. And yes, the Tevas, right. I was like, thank you. I'm gonna take that as a compliment. She says, I love Colorado. Um, but I gotta say. I'm not from Colorado, I just listened to my wife. I gotta say that you're gonna be seeing the Tevas more often. And I think that there is a way to for it to transcend in my mind and like, it, I'm, it's, I'm kind of getting through this sort of like, there's this sort of like guys from the South kind of bias that we have against, we, we think Tevas, Strappy we're thinking sandals. about those Tevas in a certain way that I'm just trying to let go of. But me and you, I know when the we only... used to wear flip flops with jeans all the time, like on te television, like commercial kings, we'd be walking around with. with no. Yeah. And also, like, I know we did looking for Miss Locklear. Yeah, oh, like, yeah. We're walking around with flip flops and jeans, and it's like, it looked horrible. That looked horrible, yeah. but we did it and we thought it was cool. It's kind of an anticlimactic ending down there. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, there needs to be something I mean, more substantial. When I looked at you, the only time I saw you wearing them, you were in loungewear at your own home. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to judge a man for what he wears in his own home. <laughs> but if I had gone out, so with I didn't them. bring it up. Mm. But you thought about it. I thought about them, yeah, yeah, but yeah. that's what I thought. I'm not gonna judge a man in his own home, you know? <laughs> but it, it's like, I don't know what he's, I don't know what, I don't know where this is going. I but, might be changing my rec to Tevas, and Tevas if that's how you say it. And you know what, does it, uh, I mean, after the Disneyland air and out situation, yeah, Christy having a, so are you, but now, we also have this thing that's like, if you we have a thing, have now I can't, that can't be my thing. Well, is it your thing? And now know. I can't do, are you boxing me out? I got the Tevas before you. That might but Christy be got them before Maybe you get the you? you. I mean, my wife was really pushing Birkenstocks. And the only reason I didn't do Birkenstocks, I, I thought Birkenstocks were equally I ugly. I can't do it. I thought they were equally ugly, but they weren't comfortable to me. The Tevas, I feel like I could do anything, do anything. And, and, and I've got this platform on my feet. Okay. We're running, we're about to run out of time. We actually have some place to be. <laughs> uh, but I have to say, the continuous water mister. <laughs> this is another graphic novel? <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is the follow up to sex criminals. No, it's that thing. We actually have one here, but I ended up getting Mr. one at home. Mr. Continuous Water. It's, it's what I spray on my hair to get it to bounce back and for the curl to come back. A lot of people are asking, what, what do you do? Well, I mean, you just spray it with a little he bit of water. Continuously. And it, what doesn't work is wetting your hair, the mister. And you know what? You get, you'll be like, I need to hit my face with this. Well, I'll just hit your face with it. It's like, you know, when you go to the park well, and it's really hot and you walk by one of those misters, yeah. you can have one in your hand. I highly recommend that. Put any water in it? Any water? Yeah, you fill it up with. You can use tap water. I, I if if we have distilled water on hand, I'll use that. Okay, but it's refillable. Uh, and the last thing, I'm actually skipping over some stuff just to just to spare you. The last thing I'll say, we also have this here, but I don't know what I would do without it at home. The downy wrinkle releaser. The only reason I'm talking about this is because I other other day, uh, and we're in the wardrobe wardrobe room getting ready for GMM, and uh, Stevie walks in to ask us something and I'm like spraying <laughs> this thing directly on my clothes. And, and she looks wearing, at me and she's, she's wearing the shirt. I've had it on and she's like, you're spraying yourself with Febreze? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, it's not that bad. She didn't know about the wrinkle release and so I just feel like I have to tell the world that there's this spray that if, you're, if your shirt's a little bit wrinkly and you don't wanna steam it and you don't, don't wanna know iron it, it, how it works. you just spray it lightly on it and it just, those wrinkles go away. You got you can get travel size. You know, you, you people who are breaking out the ironing board in your hotel room. <laughs> I'm here in my Tevas just spraying myself with water on my hair and wrinkle release on my clothes. I'm from Colorado. Huh. See, but you're, I mean, we're both, we're, we're plaid boys today. N neither one of us is their, is their thing. It's not yours or mine. I think you could also wear Tevas. Yeah, I think there's definitely multiple situations. There's, pro there's probably whole Teva families at Disney that you just didn't, you weren't thinking about it. Mm -mm, I wasn't. Um, the last thing I was gonna mention was the Aura Ring. I know you uh, used to, yeah. I, I didn't buy a lot of crap, but that was a, that was a big thing that, uh, in full disclosure, we, uh, we, 
we invested in Aura Ring. After, after buying it independently and being satisfied with it. Well, you got this because you, the NBA players were wearing it and monitoring their heart rate and their health and stuff and all the COVID of it all. But then it's just like all the biometric measurements in, in this ring are, um, they're more in depth and more accurate than the biometrics on my watch that I also still enjoy mm-hmm. and, and wear because it, and um, you can also yeah. try, I think Kiko also got one. You got the aura ring, you like it? Yeah, we're investors. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, we, uh, just, I just ordered the, uh, the next generation which constantly monitors your, uh, your heart rate, uh, not just while you're sleeping. But I love the way that it connects with the app and it, like, it tells you what your readiness is and it kinda gives you permission to take it easy if you need to. Well, The, the, the app will tell you to do that. The thing that it, it kinda trans, again, you can do, the reason that I love it is that you, you basically it lasts like a week on a, on a charge, whereas I, I wear the Apple Watch quite a bit, but like I'll get ready to go to bed, I'm like, oh man, I gotta charge this thing and then, so. yeah. I mean, it's technically four to seven days, the ring will hold a charge and you need to charge it during the day so that you can wear it while you're sleeping. But it also charges in like 30 minutes. Yeah, it's super fast. Yeah, it charges But like, I used it this past week when I'm I'm trying to make sure, like having something tell you that you got all the sleep that you needed and that this was the nature of your sleep. Yeah. For me, it gave me this like, um, Assurance that like, okay, yes, you're doing all you can to keep from getting sick as your family drops like flies. The way that it works with the app and the way that it communicates with you and optimizes your uh, your exertions and your your resting is uh, I would say is much more holistic than than with the watches. Your question about um, the Tevas, I mean, I think two guys who are best friends who both have a ring on their right hand that looks pretty similar. We have different models, but essentially, it's just like, I think that that's probably more like, hmm, those guys both have rings. Now, if we had the rings and the Tevas at the same time. And the plaid. And the plaid, I mean. There, and the beard. There's a, there's a I mean, listen, I, I'm i heading towards, here's the deal. I'm not gonna get rid of the beard, I can't. You're eventually gonna grow a beard, I mean, you're at some point, right? Yeah, we know I'm, where this I'm is I'm gonna going. get glasses at some point, I mean. We're becoming one person. It's gonna happen. We fought it and we're no longer caring, so it is actually going to happen. Yeah. So that's all the, that's, that's all the stuff that I bought and some of the stuff that Christy bought that I took credit for and that's a third of the stuff that you bought. Yeah, oh, not, not even a third, that was probably a tenth. But it, it, was, it was just inconsequential, like, Spirulina, uh, you know, I, I didn't mention that. That was one, you know, got some of that. Got a whole bag of it. Okay. Hashtag Ear Biscuits, let us know what you think about what we bought. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.